Lunch team. It's the ITV News. Good afternoon, I'm Faye Barker. The Prime Minister has said his government is going to have to be unpopular to deliver change as he defended his plans to cut winter fuel payments for most pensioners. Speaking to the BBC, Sir Keir Starmer also said the NHS is broken in unforgivable ways. Here's our political correspondent, Shihab Khan. Our work is urgent and we begin it today. It's been just over two months since this moment. And while the Prime Minister might still be bedding into his new role, plenty has already happened. One of the biggest decisions so far has been to scrap winter fuel payments for those pensioners, and it has proved controversial. No Prime Minister wants to take a decision like this, but the winter fuel payments um, are now to be targeted. They were untargeted before, um, and I think everybody thought that wasn't a particularly good system, so it needed to be targeted. Are you willing to be unpopular? We're going to have to be unpopular. Uh, tough decisions are tough decisions. Uh, popular decisions aren't tough. They're easy. So far, the government has claimed their predecessors left a range of public services on the brink of collapse. Today, the Prime Minister said an upcoming report he's commissioned has found the NHS is in an awful position. The NHS um, is broken but not beaten. I think only a Labour government can reform the NHS. But the woman who was in charge of our health service only two months ago says the Prime Minister is playing politics. I genuinely welcome a conversation about how we should um, um, ensure that the NHS is fit for, for the future. This report, I fear, is cover for the Labour Party to raise our taxes in the budget uh, okay. in October and they are laying the groundwork for this. While the blame game continues, the pressure will now be mounting on the government to deliver change. She had gone, ITV News. Next to an investigation into the practices of a surgeon at Great Ormond Street Children's Hospital. The treatment of more than 700 patients is being reviewed and the hospital says of the cases looked at so far, a third showed patients came to severe harm. Well, Olivia Guthrie is at Great Ormond Street now. So Olivia, what is the hospital saying about this? Well, the hospitals say they're incredibly sorry and they're committed to learning from what's happened. They've so far reviewed 39 of those 721 patients treated by this surgeon and more than half of them have come to harm with 13 having lifelong injuries and at least one child has had to have their leg amputated. The government says they're extremely concerned about these findings. No one accessing NHS services, especially parents, with sick and vulnerable children should ever have to worry about whether their children are receiving the right care in the right place and in safe hands. I take patient uh, safety very seriously. We'll be looking um, at the findings of investigations and taking all of the action needed. Well, the lawyer acting for some of these patients says that the surgeon at the heart of this is Dr Yasser Jabba, who no longer works at Great Ormond Street Hospital, but he does still work in Dubai. And his website there says that he's the best paediatric orthopaedic surgeon in Dubai. Great Ormond Street Hospital say that his patients here are now being reviewed by other doctors. OK, Olivia, thank you. Now there's been more gold for Great Britain on the last day of competition at the Paralympics in Paris. It's going to be a coronation here again for Henshaw. Great recovery, but Wiggs is going to come through again in second. In the women's KL2 kayaking, GB finished first and second, with Charlotte Henshaw earning her second gold and Emma Wiggs taking silver. Laura Sugar won gold in the women's KL3 race. And with only a handful of, event of events to go, Great Britain looks certain to hold on to second place in the medals table behind China and ahead of the United States. Finally, post office campaigner Sir Alan Bates has married his long-term partner Suzanne in the Caribbean. After 34 years together, the pair tied the knot with a ceremony on Sir Richard Branson's private island. Sir Richard also officiated at the ceremony. Congrats to them. That's it for now. We'll be back at 6.35. Until then, have a good afternoon. Bye-bye.